Whether you're trying to build a dApp that powers cross-chain swaps, bridges NFTs, or creates the next generation of gaming with battleships that roam across different blockchains, Axelar's general message passing is for you. Hello, my name is Stephen Fluin, and today I'm going to be covering Axelar's general message passing, and I'll specifically be diving into the three straightforward methods you need to know about so you can build the applications that span multiple blockchains. This is going to enable you to be where your users are, interact with other dApps wherever they might be, and take advantage of the unique trade-offs of different blockchains. So let's go ahead and dive into the code. Today, I'm going to be starting with a blank slate here, an empty file in Remix, and we're going to be building up the single smart contract that's going to take advantage of these three methods that I referred to. And so the way that we're going to do this is let's go ahead and start off by building a really, really simple smart contract. We'll just call it sender receiver. So we'll just set up the basics. So we'll say pragma solidity, and we'll take any of the 080 compilers. And then let's go ahead and create a contract called sender receiver, because this is the smart contract that is in essence going to be both sending messages and receiving messages. When you're building this, you could build it into separate contracts or you could build it all in one. It's really up to you architecturally. Now, in order to do something interesting, we're going to need a few different imports. And so all three of these imports that we're going to need in a moment here are going to come from the same NPM package. So they're all going to come from the Axlar network slash Axlar GMP SDK Solidity. So this is the uh, Solidity SDK that exists uh, on the XR network GitHub and on NPM. Uh, and then in all these, we're going to go in the contracts folder. And then we're just going to, oops. Uh, and then we're just going to need to clean these up here. So let's go ahead and add in the imports that we need. So we're going to need three imports. We're going to need the interface that we are instantiating. So we're going to just call it that Axelor executable. We're going to need access to the gateway that exists on chain. So we're going to import the iAxelor gateway. And we're also going to import the iAxelor gas service, which uh, I will be explaining in a little bit here. So we need all of those. So we're going to take the uh, Axelor executable from the executable folder. I'll we'll just copy and paste these. And these are going to both be from the interfaces folder. So we just need this.soul and the gas service.soul. Perfect. Now that we have all three of those, let's go ahead and start taking advantage of them. So this uh, sender receiver is going to be an Axelor executable. Uh, basically, what an Axelor executable is, is a smart contract that implements an execute method, uh, which is how the Axelor network knows how to actually interact and send messages to your smart contract in a way that's going to be verified uh, and actually checking, double checking that decentralized consensus that's coming from Axelor. Uh, and also, we want to go ahead and save the gateway and the gas service. So let's create a local variable for the gas service, and we'll just make this a public immutable called gas service. And then we're going to create a constructor that's going to take both of these as parameters. So we're going to take the address of the gateway, and we're going to take the address of the gas service. Now the gas service, uh, as we saved it, or we wanted to save this actually on our contract ourselves. So we're going to go ahead and say our gas service is going to be equal to an IX or gas service at the address that is being given. Uh, and instead of saving the gateway locally, we're actually going to be saving that by implementing the Axelor executable. So we'll just pass that off to the Axelor executable, executable constructor, and we will give it the gateway itself here. All right. So that is all the setup that we need. And now it comes down to those three methods that I, I keep talking about. And those three methods are you need a way to send the payload that you want to send, the, send, the message that you're actually passing between uh, different blockchains. You're going to need to pay for the transaction, and you're going to want to receive that transaction. So let's go ahead and set up the, the basics for both of these. So we're going to create a function called send message, and that function is going to take in three things. So it's going to take in string call data of the destination chain. We're going to take in a string call data of the destination address, and we're going to take in a string call data of the actual message that we want to be passing back and forth. Uh, now, this function is going to be an external method so that other people can call it. Uh, and then we're also going to be making this payable so that we can pass value to it as well. Uh, now, before we actually implement that method, I want to dive over to the execute side of things that uh, we're actually implementing from the Axler executable uh, contract that we're extending. Uh, and so this is just going to be underscore execute. And we'll, we'll note that the parameters here are actually going to look very, very similar. So we're going to say string call data source chain, string call data dest, or source address, which is 
and there's a tiny typo here, which we'll go ahead and fix while we go. And then the last piece is the bytes. So this is the bytes call data of our payload. Um, so over the wire, all of the things that you're sending between two smart contracts is encoded as a payload, uh, a bytes, which basically means you can encode anything. You can encode arrays, structs, any structure that you want, you are actually able to go ahead and encode. Um, and this function is going to be an internal function because it's going to be uh, invoked by the functions that exist on the uh, class that we're inheriting from uh, in order to verify signatures and ensure that we know actually where this is coming from and it's coming from that decentralized consensus. Uh, and then we're going to override this. All right, now that we've got our two basic methods, send uh, and execute our setup, let's go ahead and do all the parts that uh, we need to actually wire these up. So the first thing I want to do is I want to encode our payload. So I'm going to just say our bytes payload here. Um, we'll just throw this in memory. Uh, is going to be equal to abi.encode and we'll just in abi encode our message. Um, and what we'll probably do is we'll probably want to create a uh, string public message, which we'll, we'll save this out to later once we receive that message so we can check and make sure that it actually got sent. Now, the two things I'm going to need to do here is I'm going to need to, in order to send a message, I need to call the gateway and I need to pay for things. So let's, let's actually pay for things first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call a method on the gas service called pay native gas for contract call. Uh, and this is kind of a magical method in that uh, what it does is it takes all of the uh, token, the cur native currency that's sent to this method, and it actually uses it to pay for every step along the way. So it starts with source chain, then pays for the decentralized consensus on the Axelor network, and then it pays for the execution and approval on the destination chain. Um, and so this is going to just take a value of our message dot value. And then let's go ahead and uh, give it the correct parameters here. So we're going to give it, uh, in order for it to understand uh, what are we actually paying for, we're going to give it the address of this smart contract. We're going to give it the destination chain. We're going to give it the destination address. We're going to give it the payload that we're sending. And finally, we're going to send give it the sender who's actually initiating this message that we're sending. Um, and that's basically it. So now with that single uh, function call here, we're paying for this really complex interchain transaction. Uh, and the last piece that we need to do is actually just to send the message itself. So we'll, we'll go ahead and tell the gateway, hey, uh, we want to execute a function on the destination contract. So we'll call contract here. We'll give it again the destination chain, destination address, and the payload. So that's really it. If I want to send a message, I need to pay for the cross-chain transaction, and then I need to tell the gateway what the message actually is. All right, so now let's flip over and pretend this is the receiving side. Now we're, we're going to be implementing the function that's going to receive that message. Um, and so let's go ahead and start off just by saving that. So let's let's take our local message variable and we will set it to abi.decode of the payload that we've received. Uh, and then we will know that this is a string because we were the ones that encoded it. You could encode it however you want. Again, this could be any sort of variable that you want to pass between blockchains. Uh, and that is basically it. So we've implemented our gas payment, our call contract, and our execute methods. So let's go ahead and deploy this actually on a couple blockchains and see it work live. So I'm going to make sure that it is compiled and make sure that I haven't made any typos here, uh, such as uh, not adding the dot sole to the end of my import. Great. Uh, we've got some unused parameters. Obviously, you can use this to check and make sure your message is coming from the right source so someone's not faking that out. Um, but we're going to skip that here today and let's go ahead and deploy it. So instead of deploying it to like the, the VM in Remix, I'm going to deploy it to real blockchains because that's where the gateway and the gas service actually exist. Um, there is a fantastic uh, local dev environment, which I'll cover in a, another video. So we are starting on the uh, Polygon chain. So let's go ahead and deploy this to the Polygon chain. But in order to figure out the gateway and the gas service address that I need to deploy to, we're going to just go to the uh, Axlor documentation. So you can see here you've got mainnet, you've got testnet, and you can just copy the contract addresses for these. So I'll copy the gateway, and I will copy the gas service. And then we will do an on-chain transaction on that testnet and actually uh, deploy this smart contract. So uh, this is deploying to Polygon first, so we should actually see this. Great. Uh, we now have a contract that exists on Polygon, so I'll just write this down here. So this is our Polygon contract. Uh, and now I'm actually going to switch blockchains. So I'm going to jump up into MetaMask. Uh, let's switch to Avalanche. And so let's go ahead and uh, copy over the Avalanche gateway contract. And let's go ahead and copy the Avalanche gas service. So now we're deploying the same exact contract to a second blockchain so that we can pass messages between those two blockchains. So let's go ahead and confirm that deployment. 
And then as soon as that is complete, we will have two smart contracts that we can actually send and receive messages uh, between them. And you'll note that on, on both of these, um, the message is just going to be blank to begin with. And then as soon as we've received that message in that cross chain transaction, this actually should update. So let's go ahead and send a message. So I'm going to initiate from the Avalanche side because that's what we have selected right now. We know our destination chain is going to be Polygon. We know the destination address is the smart contract that we just created. And the message, let's give it a old fashioned hello world. Um, now, because this is payable, because we have to pay that gas for that complex interchain transaction, we're going to need to go ahead and uh, give it a little bit of token. So we'll just go ahead and give it uh, the equivalent of one ether. So that should be good. We will now go ahead and transact this. So again, we're initiating a message on the Avalanche blockchain. We're sending it one AVAX uh, to pay for the all the stops along the way. And as soon as that message has gone from pending to being uh, confirmed, we'll flip over and we'll actually watch this transaction and follow it across the different blockchains. And the way that we do that is we're going to use a tool called Axelar Scan. Uh, Axelar Scan is basically the blockchain explorer for uh, Axelar, but it also has this magic power of being able to see transactions kind of as they move. So we can see uh, here's the contract that uh, we created. Here's the destination contract. Here's my address. We can see uh, all of the tokens that we paid that were deposited that are going to be used for these contract calls. Uh, and then as each of the steps complete, as we achieve finality on the source chain, and as the uh, decentralized network on Axelar determines that this chain, this message has actually been sent, it will then be signed and then executed on the destination contract. So let's go ahead and use a little bit of movie magic. So let's skip forward. And we are back. Let's go ahead and check in on our transaction. So it looks like everything is finished. So we've got our original contract call. We paid the gas. It was confirmed by the Axel network. It was approved on the destination chain and executed there. And you can see uh, links to all of the Polygon scan, Avalanche, Snow Trace uh, of that transaction. And now let's go ahead and jump over to Polygon and see if we can see our message. So let's go ahead and switch over to Polygon Mumbai here on our MetaMask. And then let's go ahead and use that to query our message property on our sender receiver. And we have our hello string world string and we have been completely successful. So that's going to be it for this demo, uh, but there's lots more to do with general message passing. We've got faster ways of transferring. We've got ways to send tokens along with a payload. We're going to be covering all of this and more in future videos. So check out the other videos on this channel uh, or check out the Axelor documentation on docs.axelor.dev. Thanks so much for watching and see you in the next one.